Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and the Cradle is reporting Israel greenlights settler attacks on Palestinians, according to an army official there. Uh, and that's after the slaying of a Palestinian youth that was shot by a settler just recently. Uh, and for, for what? For throwing rocks. Uh, throwing rocks on settlers. It says Israeli military official reserve colonel Kobe Miram said on August the 5th the settler attacks against Palestinians in the Occupy West Bank are greenlit by the government and its ministers according to the Hebrew media. What we have seen in recent weeks are dozens of terrorist operations by settlers against Palestinian villages without resulting in arrest. The general said these attacks are greenlit and supported by the government ministers Miram added, including Finance Minister Bazelel Smotrich and others. Remember, I just give you that uh, recent uh, video that we did about Smotrich, uh, Ben Gavir, etc., and just how that right wing government of Netanyahu's is going there. Speaking of uh, Ben Gavir, we have here on Press TV, uh, hawkish Israeli minister hails settlers for killing Palestinian teenager. Uh, and let me blow this up so you can see this well enough here. It says here, uh, Israeli minister Itmar bin Gavir has released a message of support to the extremist settlers who killed a Palestinian teenager in the occupied West Bank. The far-right minister said on Sunday that anyone defending themselves against stone throwing should receive a commendation. Ben Gavir's statement was referring to the two heavily armed settlers involved in the fatal shooting of the 19-year-old uh, Kazai Jamal Matan in the uh, Palestinian village of Bakar on Friday. Uh, the pair were arrested by Israeli forces on Saturday and held in further investigation. And one of the two suspects is a former spokesman of the MP with Ben Gavir's Jewish Power Party. Some right wing Israeli MPs have also echoed support for the murderous settlers after their arrest. Earlier on Friday, Israeli settlers shot dead the young Palestinian in the village near the city of Ramallah. According to Palestinian media, Israeli settlers occupied, excuse me, accompanied by regime forces, raided Burqa village, and re residents said armed settlers opened fire on Palestinian properties and set several cars on fire across the area. Seems like Israeli settlers are trying to send a message of their own, and sadly enough, uh, Palestinians, no more armed than, than with rocks with them, end up paying the ultimate cost. Uh, and in light of that, I want to play for you here where Ram Dimmer, uh, Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs, discusses the country's judicial reforms. Listen to what he has to say here here on Fox uh, with Fox News. Uh, and the Prime Minister has abided by that policy as Prime Minister, and I would encourage all leaders around the world to respect the decision of other democratic countries. It's one thing when democratic leaders weigh in in countries that are non-democracies because the people don't have this, a say in how they govern themselves. But these questions of how you're gonna govern yourself, what is the right uh, balance that you wanna find between the branches of government, the decisions of whether the pendulum has swung too much to one side and should move back to the other side, I think that should be left to the sovereign decisions of other democratic countries and that should be respected. But let's just take a step back. Is so Israel definitely is not respecting the people of Israel that are against this either uh, in the mass protests that clearly show that uh, Israelis are not interested in this judicial reform overhaul. Uh, not to mention it's uh, only going the opposite way. And he mentioned uh, about other nations that are not democracies. And of course, we already know that this is actually turning Israel into a theocracy. So therefore, yeah, the people will not have a right to say. In fact, part of that judicial overhaul strips women of their own rights and their own voices. So what he's saying is just to the opposite. And when he goes to say that Israel does not meddle in other countries' affairs, that's completely false, 100% false. Congressmen in the United States have to sign agreements and pledge their support for Israel in order to be congressmen. I think it was only, um, um, oh my gosh, forget, kind of forget the name on that right now, but uh, there, there's been very few voices uh, ever that have stood up against those that are out there uh, uh, trying to, to force Congress and senators to sign these agreements in there. Uh, so, but, but anyway, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a shame what's happening in the state of Israel today 
uh, in the government against the people of Israel and against also the Palestinians who are also living in Israel. And of course, their voices will be stripped away as well. Epic Times reporting China and Russia send warships near Alaska and an unprecedented joint show of force, uh, the largest naval fleet force ever to uh, brush by uh, the coastal shores of the United States. Uh, that was something that we can only expect to see increase there. Also, Zelensky confirms the Ukraine received the long-range French missiles. Uh, this just came out with Sputnik News coming out recently there. That's only going to increase this war issue over in Ukraine and as well two U.S. military veterans killed in a drone attack inside of Ukraine. Uh, uh, Lance Lawrence, uh, former machine gunner of the United States Marine Corps, and Andrew Irvin, a U.S. Army captain, were killed in a drone attack inside of Ukraine. Officially, so far, they're only showing 16 uh, Americans that have been killed in combat over in Ukraine fighting with the Ukrainian army there or the military there. And uh, But we know that there are far, far more American casualties that are brought back to the United States uh, where we are actually involved in running... Uh, uh, the military Abrams tanks and other weapon systems inside of Ukraine and Americans are being killed on a regular basis, but that's all brought back to the United States as just accidents that have happened uh, through drills and things like that, which is totally untrue. Uh, we also have two UAVs in the U.S. coalition twice dangerously approached the SU-35 of the Russian Aerospace Forces in Syria. This is something that has actually been an uptick uh, going on there. I know that the United States has also been building up military uh, hardware up uh, in uh, the Al Tamf region, uh, which is in northeastern Syria. There, Vanessa Beely reporting that over on her broadcast there, uh, but also says on uh, August the sixth, M uh, MQ-9 drones of the so-called coalition of the United States twice dangerously approached Su-35 aircraft. The Russian Aerospace Forces in the sky over Syria on August the fifth. Rear Admiral uh, Vadim Khalid said at a briefing. Uh, in the area of the sediment, rock and dangerous approach was again recorded between MQ-9 and an unnamed aerial vehicle of the coalition of SU-35 of the Russian Air Force spaces. The, the approach was less than 500 meters in height, Kulit said. Uh, so it's getting pretty, pretty bad over there what's going on. Um, anyway, Sherry Tempany, Dr. Sherry Tempany also putting out a tweet here on Twitter. May your mighty hand bring them to ruin. Uh, I'm finding it very interesting in some of the doctors that are part of the movement there that are getting more and more into the religious uh, side of things. As you can see here on your screen, I'm not going to be mentioning names at this point right now, but I will be coming back to this a little bit later because uh, of this particular individual here. You guys already know what actually happened to our own family here. Uh, my father-in-law did pass away as a result of that. And, uh, and I, I am going to be sharing uh, publicly in the not so distant future, it will be this month in fact, uh, even what uh, Dr. Timpany weighed in on that particular procedure. Uh, it's going to be shocking to say the least when you see that information. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget here over on iConnect, uh, if you want to support the work that we do, you can either go directly online to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.com, but also uh, when you are on iConnect, if you go to our videos there, right below the video, uh, and I've got a dog over there begging to get in. I can hear her already over there <laughs> begging to get in. Uh, you, you might want to really watch this video right here too. Uh, this, is a very, this is a very important video, why evangelical leaders back Netanyahu. It's far more than what it seems in that video there. But anyway, you can donate right there online in iConnect.com or our website, Israeli News Live. Dot org, all the information right above my head. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Have a blessed evening.